Welcome, I'm Debbie Brown, and we're on the Disciples Path by James Harnish and Justin LaRosa. We've been talking about grace. We talked about prayer and scripture. We talked about money matters and financial generosity. And five is called the way of service. And this is about using your spiritual gifts and serving out of what God has equipped you to do. Think about meeting your maker, sitting in front of Jesus and handing Jesus your resume. And look what I've done. And what you're thinking that Jesus will say is, well done, my good and faithful servant. What if he takes all your paperwork and puts it aside and looks deep into your eyes and your heart and says, how did you live in the way that I made you to be? What did you do to celebrate the uniqueness of your gifts and your personality and your passion in a way that furthered my kingdom on earth? I think in resumes, I'm a business teacher, I think in resumes, I want to live out of my gifts that God gave me. And it takes a lot of practice and it takes going out there and trying things and trying to see where God is leading you to go. Remember, we don't have to forge that path. The disciples' path is already there for us. All we have to do is follow it. God has used ordinary people's lives throughout history to change the world. The scripture this week is John 14, 15 through 17, where Jesus promises the Holy Spirit who would be with us and also in us to do his work. We become recipients of grace, and when we serve through our gifts, we become a channel for that grace to pour out into the world. There are three scriptures about listings of gifts. In two in Corinthians, one in Ephesians, it says, these gifts have come from God and they're lists. And some of them are apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, administration, encouragement, hospitality. A lot of different things that as I say these words, maybe one clicks in your head that says, you know, I've noticed that when I do that, it's bigger than I am bigger than I am. So what we're going to do on this path is that we're going to examine what our gifts are in our groups and look at what they are and what our passion is and how we want to serve in the church. I did a spiritual gifts inventory many years ago and it said I had the gift of teaching, hospitality, and encouragement. And I didn't really understand how that would play out in my life when I first talked about it. But you know what I see, and maybe you're aware of this. Have you ever heard of the um, phrase, in the zone? You know what that means, in the zone? They say, and I'm, I'm focused on football this week because I had a particularly good win this week. Um, but... The, they say the quarterbacks that are the best in the league, when they get that ball, everything starts going in slow motion. They can see everybody's position, and, and it gives them just time in their mind. It just, they're in the zone. They know where it's, the ball is going. They can see how it's going to play out. And those people in sports that can see that in the zone are very talented and gifted in that sport. That's the way I feel when I'm teaching, when I'm sharing a meal or my home, and when I'm talking to students to encourage them. I have to give students a bad grade. I used to worry about that till I had Stephen Ministry Training. And Stephen Ministry Training told me when you tell people the truth, it is for their own good and can be really helpful for them. And one student, I said, in, in my encouragement, I said, you know what? 
the feedback you're getting from these bad grades is business is not your thing. And she said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she said, can I tell my dad that you said that? I said, yes, you can. I said, maybe this is telling you there's another path for you. And I found that I can encourage students and I get letters years later. Thank you for encouraging me to pursue that in my life. I didn't know. I can't do that. I can't stand up here and do a video for you by myself. I become a channel if I allow it, if I ask God to work in me through those gifts and they become bigger. It's the fish in the loaves all over again, just like your money, just like your talents, just like your prayers. When you give it to God, He multiplies it. And that's what happens when you serve in your gifts. We have to be prepared by prayer and use the gifts that were given. I agreed because a, fr a person used to be my friend asked me to be lay leader, and I agreed to be lay leader. And uh, no, you're still my friend. <laughs> and I thought, I can do this. But I, I was, ended up being in a lot of meetings, and I said, God, meetings aren't my spiritual gift. And I didn't know how I was going to be of service, but I was willing to do it. I know one pastor that said, I don't like spiritual gifts because people say, if I don't have the gift of giving, I'm not going to tithe. Or if I don't have the gift of something, I'm not going to teach or, or whatever. I don't believe that. I don't think that's what the spiritual gifts are talking about many times. I have served outside of my gifts. It's harder. It takes a lot more energy. But I think sometimes you're asked to stand in and stand up and do it even if it's hard. But when you're serving from your gifts, you're in the zone. And it's like writing with your left hand if you're right-handed. It takes so much energy and focus, you know, for me to be in those meetings. And then I was praying and praying and praying and God said to me, do what you do. That's what I heard in my thoughts, in my prayer about being lay leader and how hard it was for me. He said, do what you do. When you go to those meetings, be encouraging. If you're on my team, you get fed at my house. Okay, I use that hospitality and guess what? People volunteer if you feed them. And so I use that. And, and having the gift of hospitality used to mean to me that everything had to be clean and all the food had to be really good. And so I was always thinking about, you know, is everything right? But the more I learned about spiritual gifts and the more I walked on that disciple's path, what I started doing was praying at the chairs where everybody was going to sit before they came. I didn't worry about the dust and whether it was clean or not. I thought about the people that would be there. And I went to each room and in each room, I would pray at the door and say, cover this person with prayer. And I would put little prayer cards. If you spend the night at my house, you get a little prayer card on your pillow at night that gives you a scripture to pray over. That is what hospitality became to me. Encouragement in my job and, and using that with the students I have and teaching. When I was asked to do this video series, I thought, I've never done that. I don't know how to do that. But it was teaching, and I knew and had confirmed that that was a way that God used me. And I'm a channel for God there, and I said, yes. And that's one thing we can do is when we're looking at those spiritual gifts, which we're going to talk about in our groups, is to figure out exactly where we see ourselves multiplying God's grace and God's plan for us within our church and within our communities, within the world. I think it's so interesting that about this chapter about spiritual gifts. Let me tell you about, I was lay leader at another church at another time. 
And I had a spiritual partner there. I can honestly say that all of you are spiritual partners to me here. Okay, and you know, sometimes there's somebody that you just really pray with and you, and you seem like your, your spiritual life is, is parallel. You know, things that are happening are happening to the other person. Well, in, in the past, in this other congregation, Betty was my spiritual partner. And she was hired by the church as the director of evangelism. She came to me and said, will you work on a spiritual gifts program with me? I said, Betty, I know how to teach. You develop the program. I'll do the teaching. I've always said, you know, I can teach brain surgery if you give me a book. Okay, so um, and the content's not a problem, but putting together this program, I don't really know how to do that. Okay, that was on a Sunday. On Monday, I got a memo. Do y'all remember memos? It wasn't an email. It was a memo. Okay, I got it from the president of the college where I worked, and he said, we have selected four faculty members to go to the Zig Ziglar Institute in Dallas for a training for a week. You will meet with Zig Ziglar. You will be trained on adult curriculum. And it's very expensive, and four of you are going, and we want you to go. Okay. You know, because I was working at the college and they wanted me to be a department head there. And so I was faculty, I was trained there, but I didn't know how to put together a program. Okay, at the time I didn't put that together. But after I got to the Zig Ziglar Institute, probably any of you that are under 40, that would be nobody. <laughs> In this room, okay, maybe not know who Zig Ziglar is. Do y'all know who he is? Okay. I was at his 80th birthday party, and in his company, he has a chapel instead of a conference room. It has an altar, it has a Bible open, and it has a kneeling bench for his employees to go to. And that's where they meet to discuss company business. All along the walls are scripture framed. I sat in eight hours of some of the best training besides Disney, that I've ever had, okay, in the Zig Ziglar Institute, teaching us how to put together programs for adult learners. About the fourth day, I thought, hmm, I see God at work here. It took me a little while to, you know, when I'm telling you the story, it seems like it should have been obvious, but it wasn't. I thought, the state of Florida has just paid for me to go get the best training possible to develop something that the church has asked me to do in serving in my gifts. That was pretty amazing. I came home on Friday. I talked to Betty and I said, Betty, you won't believe what just happened. She said, oh, I believe it. I believe it. So we start putting this together. And we did a two-year program, which was four Sundays a night and we put everybody through the program in the church that was interested and the preachers and the staff they all came to it too and so we ran it for two years until everybody that was in the congregation that wanted to had pretty much gone through that process now in the early times when we were finishing up and concluding it we were sitting at my dining room table and Betty said this seems hard it seems like we're we're writing with our left hand let's pray and, and ask God if we've gotten off on the wrong direction. And so we prayed. And when Betty said, Amen, we looked up and there was a cardinal sitting on the windowsill in my dining room pecking on the window. Now, to me, a cardinal is Jesus, okay, and represents Jesus in my life. I love to see cardinals. And so that cardinal sitting there actually pecking on the window to me was, I'm with you. I'm with this program. I'm with you and I'm, I'm here. And so we started talking about that. We went back to what our gifts were. We looked to see if we were working in those. And the, the program for me was such a blessing because I got to use my gifts through that church in something that I had had a part in, in being a channel of that grace. You know, another thing that's interesting, while I was at the Zig Ziglar Institute, 
Zig, for his 80th birthday, invited us all to his birthday. And he gave each of the people in that program a little book of devotions, and each one had a different scripture on it. Mine was the verse in Ephesians about spiritual gifts. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And also, I've seen that happen. When you asked me to do this video, I felt like I didn't have time, and I was thinking, how am I going to be lay leader and do the video? And my boss came to me and said, we're going to lower your schedule, give you the same pay, but we're going to take one class of 300 people and, and let you just teach two classes of 200. Well, that may not, I mean, 400 students is a lot, but it's not as much as 700. <laughs> and so when I agreed to be lay leader, a few weeks later, my boss took away, or my boss, God, took away one whole section that I was teaching and I found that to be true. And then I thought, how am I going to have time to get the second video series done? We had four snow days in our state, which is almost unheard of. And I was at home and able to work on it. These are the kinds of things that you can say, oh, that's ridiculous. It's just nature. Or you can see how God helps you prepare when you're using your gifts. You know, the, what happens when you serve I don't know what happened to those people that, were, that went through that program. I don't know if all of them. I moved. I don't know if they all served or not. Our worldly yardstick is different from God's. I don't know. What does God's yardstick look like to you? Does it have stars and hearts on it? And I don't know what it might look like. Ours has numbers and lines, and that's the way we think. We don't know. What happens as a result of our gifts? Do we have to know to be validated in what we're doing for God? Not really. I think people will confirm those gifts in you. People will say that to you and know what your gifts are. But if they don't, maybe like Mother Teresa, she says, I served all that time and never heard from God. But she did it her whole life. And so I think of the, uh, the scripture in Esther, Esther 4.14. Esther had become the queen of Persia through a strange turn of events. And that popular scripture that people quote a lot, who knows, perhaps you have come to royal dignity, and the last part, for such a time as this. For such a time as this. I think... There is an urgency for us to use our gifts. I have a friend who cooks. Now, you can be a chef. Everybody can cook, except for me. And, um, and you can cook and make good food that feeds people. But when she cooks and feeds people, something magical happens. And it's more about her serving her God through that gift that she has. And I would say that is the gift of hospitality. And it comes through her food. And it's more than food. It's more than a collection of ingredients that she knows how to put together better than anybody else. It's part of who she is and part of her heart that's moving as a channel for God to serve, for her to serve God through her gift. We can look for these things. It's what's ahead on the path. Who but for you? Who but for you?